there's a beauty in being able to deliver inspiration to other people but um, not forgetting that it's a big circle that we're in and uh, there's so much inspiration out there to, to get, get inspired from. Business of Architecture UK, episode 13. Hello and welcome Architect Nation. This is the podcast for architects where you'll discover tips, strategies and secrets for running an impactful and profitable design practice. On Tuesday the 26th of June at 7 o'clock, at British Summertime, I am very excited to announce that I'll be running my first webinar where I'll be discussing the top 10 business mistakes that architects make when running a practice. Now, this has been distilled from my interviews of over 30 of the UK's top architects and thought leaders over the last year. So I'm going to put the link into the descriptor of this podcast. So all you've got to do to register for that is click on the link follow it through and I look forward to seeing you at the event. So thank you very much for that. Hello and welcome Ryan Willard here with the Business of Architecture UK and today I'm speaking with Zine McFarlane. Now Zine is a young architectural designer who's in the process of completing his part three to become registered and over the last few years, he has created a staggering following on Instagram of around it's nearly up to 50,000 followers who watch him draw and sketch daily. Um, and he posts beautiful images every single day of some of his ideas. Essentially, it's his own sketchbook, which he has put online Um, and created a fantastic audience of architects and architecture students. And he's also turned this following into a community uh, and has actually released a number of online products such as his Architecture Tips um, 101 and various other rendering tips um, for students and creating a little mini business. So I was really keen to talk to Zine about his kind of marketing efforts and how he's changing and using this Instagram following to actually become the foundations for his own architectural practice. So some really good insights here into how to effectively use social media. Uh, And also, I think it's really great for students who are becoming so much more entrepreneurially minded that when they're going for university, um, that they can create Uh, these new forms of uh, revenue streams which are also developing their architectural skill sets and building a community and laying the foundations for practice. And today I'm delighted to be sitting in one of London's wonderful brutalist hotels with Zine McFarlane who is an architectural designer and entrepreneur and social media uh, kind of a guru really like you're very very well accomplished on using social media to um, put forward lots of his own design ideas and has created quite a large following on Instagram and so I'm really just going to chat with Zine about how he's grown his account today and his kind of visions for creating a practice and how to use these kind of social media tools as marketing devices so Zine welcome Thank you for the nice introduction. Good there. to be here yeah, with you. Lovely, so lovely t- view today. It is. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. We've got overcast sky. We've got some nice uh, elevator music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> a few boats passing by. A few boats passing by. Close by as well. it's, it's lovely. It's lovely. We've got here our, our croissants and our coffee. So it's all very, it's all very, very nice. So tell me a little bit. How did this Instagram account? start and how would you describe yourself and your practice because I, I, I mean it's a really engaging account that you have and a very impressive in fo- following. Um, yeah appreciate it. Um, I'll start off with myself. Um, essentially a very very small practice. Uh, I've got about four projects on at the moment mainly domestic. Yep. Um, one of them is a community center um, and actually, one of them is a micro home, which I'm looking forward to getting started with. Nice. But um, I'll backtrack a little bit before that all started. Um, I was working at Foster and Partners. Yep. Um, and basically, uh, I was only there for a year, but it was kind of my enlightening moment of realizing do I stay at a company like that 
or do I start my own thing? Mm. Um, so to drift on to Instagram, I guess like everyone else, I started with taking a few snapshots of my surroundings. Um, I spoke to you earlier about uh, being obsessed with the uh, shard in London. So I was just really interested in seeing how it was kind of getting constructed, almost obsessed, taking random visits to London Bridge. <clears throat> um, and then essentially, after using Instagram in that way, I was trying to set myself apart a little bit. Um, starting your own business, um, as anyone knows, kind of marketing is a kind of a key part of any business. You know, people need to see you to buy from you if that's a service or a product. Um, and uh, it started with kind of just drawings and ideas, um, which basically I could use to reference um, in client meetings. Um, so it was pretty, pretty damn hard, to be honest, when I first started off creating these drawings, um, not having that much traction at all, um, but having in mind that it was kind of for future good, um, ideas that I could basically uh, come back to in a future date and kind of just pick references and inspiration from them. So almost like a, a code and a reminder check, a little tap on the shoulder um, for um, kind of future clients that were, gone, were, were to, that were to come. So that was the, the beginnings of the Instagram, really. Um, I've been doing it for over two years now. Mm. So uh, by no means uh, think that it came overnight. It was a long, grueling process. Um, when I say grueling, I actually love it to pieces. Um, it's quite a nice event from uh, house extensions and uh, CAD drawings yeah. um, in the architecture world. Well, I, was saying, I was saying to you earlier, it's quite amazing actually just having the discipline to do a drawing every single day and post it up. And what's your following at the moment? I'm not actually sure. I think it's around 40,000 followers. Could be a bit more. Um, one of the be beautiful things about um, being on Instagram for so long is uh, I'm, I'm actually quite detached from it. Ryan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like you might... <laughs> <clears throat> you might actually be on Instagram more than I am <laughs> per day. <laughs> because after that a while, it, probably be uh, true. It, it, it becomes quite repetitive. And like I said, I've been doing it for a long time. You can imagine the last thing I want to do is spend my day on Instagram um, when I post so regularly on it. Um, so you, you become, uh, you kind of have a, a schedule, if you like, if you're doing what I'm doing, which is, you know, there's a certain part of the day where you go on. And then you've got to realize that all these likes and followers that you gain are essentially a distraction from my day-to-day -day business. Mm. Um, so it's, it's something that you have to, uh, I guess, discipline yourself in. Um, so it's actually very, very easy for me not to be on Instagram that often. Um, I can't remember where I was going with that, but um, yeah. So how, how does it fit with your practice? Um, so I guess it's a, it's a marketing tool, yeah. In in, in essence, um, it's a marketing tool in two senses. Um, I guess firstly, as an architectural designer, um, it 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 allows clients to um, quite obviously see that I'm a, a slightly out of the box thinker. Mm. Um, so you're not coming onto my Instagram to see um, full construction drawings of a. Um, a regular house um, so it kind of gives kind of clients a, an idea of my design flair and style um, to put in a nutshell um, secondly um, I have kind of ebooks out yep which was initially based for um, students um, people would be very sad to hear that it actually started off as, as kind of a, a free product um, after kind of leave well, after kind of completing my part two, um, I kind of finished the course and thought to myself, well, one, that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that's over. <laughs> um, probably like a lot of people thinking, uh, you know, when you get that distinction or whatever, you think, was it worth it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, 
But I guess more importantly, um, what was missing from that experience and how was it so, like, why was it so difficult? And one of the things that I thought um, I kind of had to p provide and give to the um, industry as a whole was some tips and some advice on just almost like reminders. So the free book kind of, which is now 100 Tips for Architecture Students, was... Um, was an ebook not to say, look, you're going to find a hundred tips in here that you've never heard before. It was a hundred tips of reminders, almost something which I would put on, on my wall mm. and remind myself that, okay, um, eat properly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, and we can laugh about that now. But as you know, probably kind of when you was a student, it's so easy to pick up those noodles instead of getting some greens in you before a crit. Yeah, pizza boxes. Um, you know, it was, it was little things like presentation, which is very key, you know. It's not really talked about a lot, at least when I was studying, but um, kind of how important your presentation is, not only for yourself, but kind of how your presentation will impact how a client reads a drawing. Mm. Um, how a client reads a drawing and how a builder will read a drawing are two different things. Um so yeah, um, that's kind of what the the ebooks do. It kind of grew from advice for st for students um, into kind of tutorials on rendering with Photoshop, um, even finding a job in architecture. Um, not all of the ebooks are quite illustrated yet, but that mm. was kind of a key part of kind of why I sold the product. Is, so is um, there is there other books? Is it or there, there yeah, hundred books? I think I've got about six ebooks out at the moment. Um, and they're, they're kind of just almost, I guess they'll call them coffee table books yeah. if it was to be on your phone because they're e-books. So obviously you read it on your Kindle or your phone. And sometimes I even read them myself. I've mm. got them in my email inbox and I just check myself sometimes. Like, am, am I doing those things? Um, you know, on the train, just checking, oh, okay, I'm slacking there. And, and that's kind of what, it's, what it is. It's kind of just reminders. Um, and hopefully they will grow into something which... Um, could possibly be a bit more in depth so kind of start off with the 100 tips and then if you want to dig deeper into those um there'll be kind of other other um ebooks available in the future so yeah rambling a bit there sorry ryan so that's all right so so, so <coughs> how did they when did you they became like kind of free books that you were giving away at yeah. first and then you decided to start monetizing them yeah or? so it started off um like i said the tips for students um, and why I started to monetize them is actually because I put more effort into it and I was given more information um, and that's not just on a scale of um, text it was visually so mm. I was actually making the ebook something that were actually um, I'd say quite pleasant to actually read through so there's a hundred graphics in these books which obviously take take quite a lot of time to produce yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that's kind of part of the key part of the key with a good book is that it engages you and you know as uh, kind of creatives I think we need to pay attention to that factor is that there's no point in creating a masterful book and um, that doesn't engage the consumer or the audience um, so so yeah um, that was one of the reasons why I monetized it is because I put more effort into it and I bulked it up Mm. So the free edition was just text and then it became a visual experience and a bit more kind of meat in the tips. Um, and then I kind of just branched out from there. Um, and, then, and then how does that website, the books and the Instagram and the social media accounts, how do they all kind of relate to each other? Um, so, well, in a literal sense, it's quite literally a link. Yeah. So if you go onto my Instagram, it kind of just links you straight through to the ebooks. Um, and again, on a client basis, they would normally come through more my email. So there's an email link through the Instagram as well. Um, I was speaking to speaking to you earlier, Ryan, about um, kind of future plans for for the business. I, I probably would advise anyone who's who's kind of got got that idea in mind as well to separate as much as you can, mm. which does mean sometimes a, a bit of an annoyance when you're going through your phone and having to switch a, switch the accounts. Um, I'm actually at the point now where I've got a few phones, which I can actually um, save that hassle um, <laughs> by doing is just going completely on a new phone um, and uh, doing it that way. But kind of keep it separate just because um, the audience is 
are different um, and it, it can confuse people sometimes. So um, that's kind of my next step is creating a bit more separation between Zine, the architecture studio, and mm. uh, Zine, the inspirer, and then Zine, the um, ebook seller. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, so, and so how did you kind of learn how to use Instagram? How did you learn the sort of the vocabulary of, of marketing and begin to build up these audiences yeah it was it was a it was a very slow process um but but in short um time is also is is obviously helpful um patience um like just sometimes i even go back myself kind of scrolling through my instagram um and it's, it's a lot of trial and error you know so just testing certain things um I was, again i was speaking to you earlier ryan about kind of being true to yourself so you might mm. have a a, a different style that you feel like doing test it see see how see see what the engagement is like and um i guess i've read quite a few different books on on it um youtube is is key um there's so many free so much free advice out there um hopefully there's a few bits of free advice i'm giving today as well which is um yeah to be patient with it be mm. consistent with it um and test you know till this th Till now, with over 40,000 followers, I'm always testing. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's and it. So, and so when you say test, what do you mean? Like, how do you test a, how do you test a yeah. post? How is, it all, how is it all measured? Yeah, so, um, so Insta for example, Instagram, um, although I don't just recommend getting yourself on Instagram, but all social medias, because you don't know when Instagram's not going to be trending. Yeah. Um, you know, it used to be Twitter a few years ago. Um, Tumblr even, um, but I might add I'm on all of those just because you never know which one's going to um, come back into the market. Yeah. Um, but a few ways of testing, um, for example, I like to draw as well as do graphic graphical images. Um, so there's kind of a different process involved, obviously. Um, so testing, testing in that way is one way of trying to test, um, for example, uh, an elevation to a section. Um, a, a sketch to a Photoshop image or a 3D image and then obviously um, testing it with promotion as well so um, all these online uh, social media have different ways that you can use paid promotion so um, although um, pretty much all of my uh, following has come organically um, because I'm a fan of having fans not followers yes um, what's the distinction between the two um, well, I think followers are there to look and fans actually support you. Right. Um, I think that's kind of the bit of truth of it. And uh, for anyone who's doing a business, you want to kind of know that um, fans obviously buy products and help the business to grow. Um, so they essentially do deserve more of your attention and more of your your own support. Um, so, so, yeah... Um, they're, they're your main ways of testing. Um, I, I do advise, in, even even when it comes to advertising, that you take that same um, method of um, trial and error to advertising. So you might try that one day you're going to test people in uh, London. Mm. The next might be um, in a boundary area of London where there's maybe less competition. Um, a lot of the social media these days have um, really awesome kind of tracking information and yeah, we could be here all day talking about that but yeah they're your two way, main ways of testing really is a uh, uh, promotion for advertising and testing your material mm. um, so that could be through videos it could be through different styles of drawing it could be through phot photography um, the list goes on so yeah and so for, for you as an entrepreneur how do you, how do you see kind of social media developing into your own architectural practice and its importance for students yeah and for like the younger generation of you know because people are becoming more and more fluent with social media and you yeah. know i can i can see a time where people can be getting their jobs and engaging with other architectural practices through social yeah. medias there's like you know you can put on you can put a good portfolio together on instagram accounts <clears throat> yeah i think Essentially, um, social media is already here. It's part of our, our lifestyle 
um, already. You know, if, it, if you look on most packaging these days, I'm surprised it's not on this coffee cup here, Ryan. Like, um, it surrounds us all. Um, I guess the thing to be a bit careful for, I would say, is, is the merging. So you don't know which social media is going to survive for it mm. all. Um, so it's, there's a bit of risk there. Um, you know, a lot of people just talk about me on Instagram, but uh, I'm a kind of a fan of putting your eggs in many baskets in, yeah. in that case, because you don't really know which one's going to uh, buy out which one and which one might dissolve, and you might find yourself wasting a lot of time on there. But it's definitely something embedded in the culture. Um, I have a few kind of freelance staff at the moment who help out um, probably more with the administration of what I'm doing sometimes. Um, albeit I am the one in front of my Instagram um, <laughs> tapping away on my phone and, and doing all of that. Um, it's definitely part of the culture um, and a, a part of um, the future of not just the architecture industry, but how uh, businesses kind of can integrate that um, that into um, their way of work. Um, and I, I guess to sum it up, really, it's not just a great way of networking with other people. Mm. Um, I'm, not, I'm not too sure about kind of the, the status element that's going around it at the moment. Um, there seems to be a bit of stigma around, oh, you've got many followers, so somehow you're... <laughs> higher or below people mm. because of that I, i'm not a fan of that because there's just so much fake followers and fake likes and stuff like that out there that it's just something that you can't trust yeah um but definitely it's 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 a thread um it's a thread of um all businesses nowadays um and i guess that's mainly because it's uh, a way to att attract clients essentially and network so um how that develops into my business, I couldn't even tell you yet. Um, but all, all I can say that it's a very helpful um, tool in kind of uh, bringing new eyes to what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. And what have been some of the, you were talking earlier as well about some of the like, less desirable effects of having large, large uh, Instagram followers, which yeah. is, again, I think it's quite, it's, it's quite interesting to, you know, cause people are, end up being, you know, they don't censor themselves perhaps appropriately. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny you, you bring that one up, Ryan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but it's, it's very true because no, no one really asked those questions. Um, you're probably the first person who's asked me that on something live like this. Um, and it's, I guess the word is haters, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get haters. Um, and, uh, I, I guess it surprises surprises me on the amount of haters you do get. Um, the positives of of the haters you do get is, um, you know, when people are angry or frustrated or even jealous, there can sometimes be a good bit of feedback in there that you can yeah. take away. Um, you know, so even if it is, oh, I don't like the way you draw or you can't draw, um, un underneath that all is someone saying, keep to the graphic design, mate, like don't draw. Um, and that's fair enough. Um, you don't always have to exactly um, take on all the feedback. For example, I love to draw anyway, so I'm going to keep on drawing. Yeah. Um, and someone might say, I don't like your graphic work. It's too simple. Um, <laughs> again, <laughs> I'm not really going to change um, what I'm doing directly because um, one person says they don't like my graphical style. Mm. But it's feedback. And I think you'd be stupid to just take on all the positive comments you get and not bear in mind um, the, the negative because there's, like I said, there's some jewels in there sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the comments, you know, they're, they're, they're not a great thing. Um, sometimes people are even bold enough to actually comment on your image so the world can see. It's not always through the DMs, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So any, any haters out there who... who who might be following me, could you just please DM me the, <laughs> the, the, privately. Horrible, <laughs> the horrible comments? Because it's harder for me to go through my messages and delete you. So if you just DM me, say that, you know, I, I suck, that's okay. But just give me a one-to-one. -one. Like, I'm quite open to, to take that feedback on. So, yeah, that's, that's that. Well, it's, it's, it's actually really... Uh 
I think an important business lesson to be able to, like, like the way you've just explained it, actually to be able to deal with uh, negative comments and feedback maturely yeah. and also be able to have the intelligence to be able to actually, again, because it's all about understanding your audience. Yeah. And I think this is, a, this is a kind of wider conversation that often architects were not so fluent in is understanding the needs and, the, and, the, and our audience and being able to hear um, and distill something useful from something which can be a quite harsh bit of feedback. That's a really powerful business lesson yeah to be able to to take and to utilize yeah um i I guess something as well that i probably didn't touch upon as well is um the 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 beauty of being able to inspire people so Mm. with those negatives and you've got to remember sometimes the haters they're secret fans anyway (laughs) they just don't know how to (laughs) they don't know how to voice themselves (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um so um yeah like i get inspired like me taking um the humble pill as well you know i have bad days like everyone else i have days where i might go to a client meeting and i'm just exhausted the last thing i want to do is really put out another piece of content mm. um but again just to humble the whole conversation is that you know, I go onto Instagram too and, you know, see some of the work that you're doing, Ryan. It's just inspiring. I see, you know, if there's a new post on Art Daily, Dazine, whatever it might be. Um, like, don't think for one second that, um, I, I, you know, it's, 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 there's just so much inspiration out there, is, is, is I guess what I'm trying to say, mm. is that um, there's a beauty in being able to deliver inspiration to other people. But um, not forgetting that um, it's a big circle that we're in, and uh, uh, there's so much inspiration out there um, to to get get inspired from. Brilliant. Yeah. So, what's next? Yeah, that's a good one. What's the What's the future hold for Zee McFarlane Design Studio? Um, so, at the moment, I'm I'm working from home, um, so that's not ideal. I guess in in the literal sense, the next stage is. Um, I've got a few, I guess, some, some good solid fans mm. from all of this um, who've shown some just extraordinary passion to what I'm doing. Um, and like I said, I am kind of hiring kind of freelance and part-time. But I'd really like to utilize the fact that people do want to come on board. Um, so the next step would definitely be finding a studio space, um, big or small, um, and finding or connecting with those people who are on the same page really Mm. um and 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 growing the business that way um if i'm completely honest um my hands are pretty full at the moment so my first um my my first step is to make sure that um you know i can control the kitchen that i'm in opposed to starting um starting hobs up in the living room yeah um if that makes any sense, a bit of a bad metaphor there. <laughs> uh, but if you're with me, you're with me. <laughs> um, so essentially, yeah, kind of trying to get my uh, ducks in the line yeah. with the work that I've got on at the moment. And then just obviously having that uh, mindset of the future growth quite physically with office space and getting more people involved. Um, and the beauty of that is being able to teach them the social media side as well as the architecture side. So it's those students who are really pushing social media as well. They're kind of on my radar mm. um, in terms of they'll be able to take over certain aspects that I'm doing um, whilst I'll be able to take them on site. And, you know, although my, although my projects are quite small, they're getting some valuable information um, experience there um, from coming on site with me. So and so will this be always be like a, a, a kind of business model for your architecture practices that you will have a strong social yeah. media element with other kind of intellectual assets that you've created yeah. that will, you know, be bringing in multiple streams of yeah. revenue as well as the traditional, you know, yeah. paid services for... Yeah. Um, you know, my heart and soul is, is probably with the architecture side. Yeah. Um, but I guess essentially we're only in my mind, scratching the surface mm. with my other outlets that I would like to go into. Um, you know, I'd probably say I'm in that umbrella, you know, as a creative. I guess a, a lot of us in, in the industry feel the same. 
Um, but also kind of knowing that I've got a crew before I can start running. Mm. Um, but yeah, definitely to answer your question, definitely um, spreading spreading the seed out into other um, industries um, at the right time, I guess. And you were saying earlier that you're in development of a, a new book for social media for architects. Yeah, so it's it's not out yet. But um, I was speaking to you earlier, Ryan, about it was it was always an idea, but I didn't quite have the following to match the idea. I felt it would, would have been a bit hypocritical if I had 200 followers and or even two, two followers um, and to be writing about how to get social media um, for designers and creatives. Um, so I think it's come to that point now where um, I'm absolutely no specialist, um, but I've learned a few things along the way which I'd like to express in a, um, some form of book, um, which just takes the perspective from like a creative's mindset as well because you've got to remember um, advertising through social media um, as a designer is very different to advertising through social media if you was a lawyer for example so um, it's that kind of niche that we that we, that we are in which I kind of want to utilize there and you know what are the differences between um, selling a product through selling a service for example um, what platforms are most useful mm. what tools aren't um, being utilized within certain um, platforms um, and that's even something that I'm going to bring out onto my Instagram um, kind of a little taster for you guys would be so let's break down Tumblr, Twitter, um, Pinterest, Instagram probably missing a few but let's start with them um, you know, Tumblr, the, the amazing thing about Tumblr is that it's a bit of a circulation there. So you can post something and it kind of goes on to infinity. Um, you might be confused about what I'm saying here, but um, Instagram, for example, it's a quick feed. So you see it for a few days maximum and then you forget about it. In terms of the consumer, the audience. Exactly, right. exactly. So, so you kind of um, just scroll up, it's a feed. Whereas Tumblr is a, an infinity. So... For example, if you used to post something I did on Tumblr tomorrow or in, um, or if you'd posted it two years ago, that same post, Ryan, could still be circulating, um, which Instagram sadly doesn't really give you that feature. Right. Um, Pinterest, for example, I use a bit more like a portfolio, if you like. I'm giving you some gems here now. I like it. I like it. <laughs> keep coming. Keep coming. <laughs> Going to have no ebook to sell. <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. Um, Pinterest is a bit of a portfolio and I've kind of spread out a little bit there in terms of um, I kind of like a bit of fashion as well so sometimes I, I throw in an, an illustration of a fashion concept that I'm thinking about a lot of my Instagram followers would be like what are you doing Zine? You, you do architecture, what are you playing at? so at Pinterest I'm giving the audience an opportunity to see a bit, bit of my other stuff as well but essentially it's more of a portfolio um, and then moving on to Twitter is uh, Twitter's where we speak. Is, is it ma mainly your your own work that you put on Pinterest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll go more into that on the <laughs> there, but there's a reason for that. Right. There is a reason for that. Um, Twitter, as everyone kind of knows, it's a voice. So at the moment, it's kind of a constant feed of my work that I'm posting on Instagram. But essentially, that's where I want I want it to be a place where people can talk, and possibly even a place where you know, haters <laughs> and um, positive fans can actually give their feedback, even if it's not just on my work. Yeah. Because um, like I said, I've, I've really not got a problem so much with the haters because there's feedback there, but um, appropriately, appropriately placed. So I'm kind of giving people on Twitter in the future the opportunity to speak and speak about it. Um, so, so that's it. Um, Instagram obviously is a, is a platform where um, it's, it's quite easy to network as well because everyone's on there. So probably if I was to give advice on Instagram, um, you know, check out terminologies like influence, influencer marketing, marketing, sorry, slipped up on my words there. Um, and that's basically where people with kind of social media power can use themselves as kind of a marketing tool to reach out to their following. Um, 
So Instagram, I'll probably say, is the place where people are at. So get talking there, get communicating. It's almost like what Facebook used to be. Mm. Um, and obviously Facebook's one that I'm missing out there as well, which has got its pro- pros and cons as well. So, yeah, that's it. That's it and, and, and do you find that the cost of like the advertising, is it still as accessible as it was, say, a few years ago? Or is it becoming... Yeah, I, I'm probably not the man to speak to on that um, because... Basically, I don't like to s- spend too much on advertising, is the, is the long story short. Um, I always find, okay, put it this way. Let me think about this. <laughs> put it this way. Um, if I was, we're sitting here, right? Say we both had our phones out, we're both on Instagram, for example. If you're sliding through your feed and you see a sponsored feed and it's, you know, I don't know, picture of the um, Thames, because we're there now, just for an example. Chances are you're probably not going to click on that. Mm. Let's say if there was even some really cool architecture on there that you was interested, you might click through it and you might even just follow whatever, you know, that business is. But I'll tell you what's much, much, much more powerful is if, you know, I came up to you, we had had a 20-year friendship, and I go, Ryan... There is absolutely this Instagram that you have to check out. Let me show you. I've been following them for about two years, solid, putting out content all the time. Check him out. Mm. Really nice guy as well. <laughs> Good banner. Check him out. There's no comparison there in terms of uh, what's going to create a, a, a stronger fan base. So with advertising... That is the other option. That is the, again, I'm, I'm not hot on my metaphors or analogies today, um, but that is that option. It's the flick through. You're just going to, you're going to be there for a second and be, be gone tomorrow. Um, how you create a solid following is by creating a, a, a fan group that support what you're doing. Um, so, yeah, just probably be careful with the advertising side because I have tested it and I have trialed it. Um, if you've got a lot of money to blow, throw money at it um, and, and test. But if you haven't, you need to be um, kind of a bit knowledgeable about what you're doing because it's easy to just waste money. Um, and if you haven't got your, your um, data set up, you might have like, you know, 200 likes from, I don't know, people in India who aren't ever going to come to your practice in London or be one of your clients. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, it was a part of me which was saying, yeah, you know, go for advertising. But if I'm to be absolutely honest, um, what I did personally and still do today is, is test it more opposed to say, you know, I've got 200 quid to spend today on advertising. Let's have a, you know, let's spend 200 quid every day and, and, and get lots of followers and be happy with my ego. Mm. But um, that's probably a dangerous game to play. Yeah. No, and as you, as you yeah. say, the, the key is creating those fans, yeah. having that high level of engagement, yeah. people that are actually going to support you and yeah. help you achieve your own financial goals and targets and yeah. create a business. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Zine, that was fantastic. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. It's been a pleasure, Ryan. We need to do it again. Thank Likewise. you. Yeah, we'll sit down and enjoy, enjoy some more coffee. <laughs> Thank, Cheers, you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, that is a wrap. Thank you very much for listening. And don't forget to register into my webinar, which is being held on the 26th of June. It's a Tuesday, 7 o'clock British summer time, where I'll be discussing the top 10 business mistakes that architects make when running a practice. And you can register in the link that is provided in the descriptor of this podcast. Thank you. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.